my today's presentation is about two orders of the trilobites, red leaf cedar and olinellida. I'm Sheikh Sajjad Mahmood, and I am your presenter, and I'm going to take you through the journey for these two orders. The first order, red leaf cedar. As we know, trilobites classification is an unsettled, dynamic, and a very controversial topic. There are many sorts of classification for trilobites, among which Fortis revised classification, which was published in 1997, Trilobites Treasy book, they described the order red lecida as among the first trilobites to be appeared on the fossil records. The fortress reviewed classification is a higher level classification for trilobites, which was revised many times in 2001 and in 2002, where the from trichoparidia order, the herpetidia order came out from there. And in the recent times, the odontoclaridia and trinuclear suggest uh, order suggest an arrangement that looks like that looks something like this. And this is the branch and the classification for Forte is revised. Then the range, the time range for Redlicidia were from the early Cambrian time till the mid Cambrian time. The time range was 525 million years ago till the 500 million years ago. When we compare the anatomy of Redlicidia and the other trilobites, we can see it contains many ancestral properties like having numerous amount of thoracic segments with spinal tips. This order is then subdivided into two suborders, the Olinellina and the Redlicina. The two major legastatin that contains the Redlicids are the Emu Bay shell, which is in the Southern Australia and Mount Ancient shell near Changjiang in China. The special characteristics of these two legastatin is that they are conserved legastatin. That means they contain soft body tissue parts. The exemplary characteristics of red lecida is shown here, and it is uh, shown in a morphological segmental way, like in cephalon, thorax, and pygmidium. The first characteristics of the cephalon of a red lecida is that they are very large and they are typically semicircular, arc shaped. The galabella is typically long, well segmented with their galabellar furrow and their galabellar lobes the parallel tapering and expanding forward. Their guineal spine is uh, present in most of the red lecidas and they uh, come from, continue from the narrow tubular cephalic border. And their eyes are large crescent shaped and hollow coral eyes. The hollow coral eyes are mainly compound eyes formed with a numerous amount of uh, lenses which are connected together and then are covered with a single corneal membrane. Their eye ridges may be subdivided and the hypostome is natant or contaminant. The hypostome is the hard mouthed part of the trilobites. It is, uh, there are three types of hypostome, the natant, contaminant, and impedant. The natant one is those hypostomes which are not connected to the anterior margin. It is assumed that the hypostome is connected with the body with some soft tissue membrane which is not preserved in the fossil content. In contaminant hypostome, they are connected with the anterior margin and are also aligned with the galabella. In impedant one, they are connected with the anterior margin but are not aligned with the galabella. They usually have a very wide rostral plate. Thorax is numerously segmented up to 90 plus segments. Their pleura contains spinal steps and it may be also subdivided into prothorax and officothorax. Their pygidium is uh, mycopygus, which means the pygidium is smaller than the cephalon and it may be one segmented part or it may contain a few segments. Then all in anita. Another classification for trilobites was given by Baker. The Baker's first classification was given in 1897. This classification was done by in the basis of the orientation of the facial suture and the marginal area that covers that the peach cheek and the free cheek area covers. In this basis, there uh, were three orders given by Baker. The orders name are hyperperia, opistoferia, and properia. Some of the hyperperial descendants having properian cheeks and some of the hyperperial ancestors had opistoperian sutures. So it uh, creates some sorts of controversy. And then in 1901, this uh, Baker's classification was revised and the hyperperia order was then divided into three orders, the Agnostida, Eodicida, and Olinellida. And Olinellida is also known as Masonicida and their approximate age of abundance was in the lower Cambrian region. That according to Baker's classification, Olinellidas are typical trilobites in most cases, which we found find in the fossil evidence. And they are one of the oldest tribes of the trilobites. 
their cephalon is uh, typically large, their pygidium is small, their thorax is separated into many segments, they don't have any well-developed facial suture, that's their absent part, and the eyes and the prominent cut parabellobes over here extend to the galabella, and it is the most ancestral group, at least as far as the cephalic segments and spine, and the suture evolution is concerned. In the end, we can all agree to that the trilobers were one of the fascinating creatures to roam around the ocean and still providing us for the knowledge for better understanding the planet we live on. Thank you for your patience.